Hello and welcome back to Spartan Student version 9. Today we're going to be going through tutorial number 6 which is called Groups of Organic Molecules. As always to get to a tutorial you'll click the activities menu then tutorials and today we're going to be looking at this one Groups of Organic Molecules so go ahead and click that and it'll open a PDF. I've already got that open in another window here and without further ado we're going to get started by building acrylonitrile which is probably a molecule that you have become familiar with at this point so I'm not gonna narrate my building of it but there we go we've got acrylonitrile I'm gonna copy that and then what I'm gonna do is click file build new molecule clipboard and double click alternatively you could have right clicked and clicked paste but what we're going to do now is go to groups and cyano and we are going to build 1,1-dicyanoethene. We're going to build a new molecule. This one is going to be a cis isomer and the next one that we build is going to be the trans isomer this one we're going to fill three of these valences and lastly we will fill all of them and build tetracyanoethylene Okay, so now that we've got these six molecules and they're all in the same document, we're going to click on the spreadsheet. And what I'm going to do here is click where the name is, and I'm going to replace all of the molecules with calculated versions of them from our database. And you can see their names will all populate there. And you can click between these using the arrow keys and you'll see which one is highlighted with that blue box that's the uh, molecule you're looking at so next thing we're gonna do is double click in this header field and type log rate equals we're going to go ahead and enter this experimental data for relative rates in uh, the PDF into the spreadsheet. Oops. Once you've got that data, we're going to add the energy from the LUMO in electron volts. We're going to close out of the spreadsheet and out of the model kit. And we're going to click plots. You can also do display plots. And we're going to add a new plot on our x axis. We're going to put the log rate, and on the y axis, we're going to put the Lumo energy and you'll see we have a plot here. I'm going to go ahead and make it a least squares plot by clicking this edit tool, clicking least squares and you'll see we've got a line added to the graph. And now what I'm going to do is click this arrow, move this and close this and you'll see a circle around each of these points on the plot which represent different molecules. You'll see the cis and the trans isomer of dicyanoethylene are quite similar. Alright, so we're going to close out of this and we are going to move on to addition versus substitution and build one after the other cyclohexene. I'm going to do that in 2D and that's built like this. I'm going to do filed 
and build new molecule. Actually, I'm going to sketch new molecule. And this one is going to be the trans 1, 2 dibromo cyclohexane. So for that, I'm going to select bromine. And I'm going to use these shaded and dashed lines to have an upward and downward wedge. We're going to sketch another molecule. And this one is going to be one bromocyclohexene, and that's going to be like this. I'm going to sketch benzene, which is pretty easy. Done. Then I'm going to uh, sketch trans. 5,6-dibromo-1,3-cyclohexadiene, which looks like this. Add a double bond here and here. And we're going to do the uh, upward wedge for bromine there and the downward one here. Next, we're going to sketch bromobenzene, which will be a benzene with the bromine coming off. And the last two that we are going to do are bromine and hydrobromate, or hydrogen bromide, pardon me. Alrighty. So now if you take a look at the spreadsheet, you'll see that we've got all eight of those molecules here. I'm going to replace all of these with are omega B ninety seven X D at six three one G star. And the next thing we're going to take a look at is the reactions menu. Okay, so first what we're going to do is see what it would be like if we took bromine and cyclohexene trans 1 2 dibromo cyclohexane on the product side and balance and you'll see the energy that it would take to go through that reaction so you'll see that the products are heavily favored there next we'll add benzene to our reactants and bromine and on the products, we're going to add trans 5, 6, dibromo 1, 3, cyclohexadiene. And you'll see that this is not energetically favorable. It takes uh, 9.67 kilojoules per mole uh, is, the, is the difference between the reactants and this product side. Now you can play some games here and test some other reactions, but I am going to go ahead and move on to acidities of carboxylic acids. So I'm going to close that document and that open panel. And one after the other, we are going to build trichloroacetic acid. So that'll look like this. And in the same document, we're going to do dichloroacetic acid, which will be just the same, except with two chlorines instead of three. And next, we're going to just do chloroacetic acid. which if you're following along, we'll have one less chlorine. Now we're going to build formic acid, and that looks like this.
Oops. All right, next one is going to be benzoic acid. And that's built like so. Next, we've got pavalic acid, which will look like this. And the last one that we're going to do is acetic acid, like this. All right, so now that we've got all those, we're going to enter the 3D view and what we're gonna do is click on the spreadsheet I'm gonna replace all of these just as we did before you'll see the names populate and you'll see I have acetic acid highlighted just quickly showing you what these look like in 3d Chloro, dichloro, and trichloro acetic acids. Okay, so what we're going to do now is double click inside an open header. We're going to type PKA and hit enter or return. And now we're going to go ahead and enter the PKAs. As you see in the picture on the PDF, looks like I've transposed pyvalic and acetic acid, so this is 5.03 and this is 4.75. If you'd like, you can sort these by PKA by clicking in the header and then clicking sort and you'll get these in order. All right. So we are going to display all of the molecules at once. And to do that, what I'm going to do here is check all of these boxes on. So you'll see they're all grossly overlapping. We're going to go to the model menu and toggle coupled on. And what I'm going to do is using the right mouse button. Oops, looks like we didn't get our trichloro. I'm going to arrange these on screen so that you can see the hydrogen on each of them. Okay. Now, if I were to go to model and couple it again, I can move all of them at once. So we're gonna go to surfaces and we're gonna get an electrostatic potential map. You wanna make sure that global surfaces is checked. This will calculate the electrostatic potential map for every molecule in your list. All right, so that's just completed. We can check this on and all of them will come on at once. So what I'm going to do here is check them all on and I'm going to reorient these by uncoupling them, going back through the list and moving these and zooming out so that we have a little bit more space to operate in here. So you may have already noticed a blue region around these hydrogens. I'm going to couple these again. 
what we can do is make sure that each of these property ranges is correct. And if we have global surfaces checked, then it'll do it for all of them at once. Alrighty. And what we're going to do is actually from that properties dialog, we're going to post the max into the spreadsheet. So if I open the spreadsheet, you'll now see that we posted the max point on the surface and we're going to plot the pKa versus the maximum electrostatic potential in a plot. So I'm going to close this, I'm going to click plots, I'm going to add a plot, and I'm going to plot experimental pKa versus the property max and create this plot. I'm going to add a least squares fit And we're going to close that. And I'm going to move these. So just clicking through, starting here, we've got each corresponding point on this plot. Okay, so that is going to conclude our tutorial today. The next tutorial is going to be number seven, which is about spectra of organic molecules, and we will see you then.